reach out and touch him today. Touch him while he is near. Reach out. His hymn is right in front of you. His hymn is right in front of you. All you have to do is reach out and touch him. No matter what you're going through, no matter your situation, no matter your troubles, God is requiring from you this morning to reach out. Reach out of your circumstance. Reach out of your troubles. Reach out against the opposition that stands in your way. Push your way through the crowd. Press your way through the obstacles. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed her way through the crowd. There is a pressing There is a pressing that God is calling us to press. Press through your obstacles, the things that your adversary have set up against you to try to keep you away from God. Draw nigh unto him and he will draw nigh unto you. Reach out and touch him while you have the hem of his garment in your view. Speak to yourself and say, if only I could touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be healed. Prophesy your healing. The woman with the issue of blood had a conversation within herself. As she sees Jesus walking in the distance, the crowd all around him, the law that's keeping her that's in a state of uncleanliness from getting to Jesus. She's talked to herself and she said, if only I could touch the hem of his garment. There was something inside of her operating. There was something inside of her that, that she knew without a shadow of a doubt that if I could just get to him, if I could just get to the master, I know there is a knowing. She didn't say, maybe. If only I could get to his him, maybe I'll be healed. She didn't say, well, is there a possibility of my healing? She said, if I could only get to the hem in his garment and touch his hem, I know that I'll be healed. She knew it in advance. In advance, she knew that if I could just touch him. See, this is when you reach a place in your life to where you're not waiting on God to give it to you. You say, I'm going to take it. She took her healing because she knew in advance Jesus didn't lay his hands on her like he did the blind man. 
Jesus didn't speak to her and, and, like, and, and cast out demons like he did other folks. When she touched to him of his garment, imagine all of the people around him that was pressing him, that was touching him, but only he felt one touch. Think about that, church. Will your hand be the hand that God feels this morning? Oh! Will your hand be the hand that God feels? Will your voice be the voice, the voice of faith, the hand of faith, that while everybody is listening, as he is listening to everybody's request, He said, who touched me? Oh my God. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you woke up three o'clock in the morning and imagine everybody in the world is praying to him? But then you are in a state of desperation and you pray and he said, who touched me? Isn't it good to know that God knows, uh, he knows a faithful person when he feels one he knows a person that, that, that has already premeditated, pre-thought in their mind that he has the ability to heal, set free and deliver and he said who touched me he was on his way to go and heal somebody else but while he was on his way this is what he said he said I felt First you leave me. See, a lot of times we, we come to church. You come to church for a touch. You come to church a lot of times to hear the word you wanted to touch in. And that's all good. The word of God is supposed to touch us. A lot of times we come to the altar and we want the, the pastor to lay hands on them. You want to touch from God. But when you're in a state of desperation, when you have exhausted everything, when you said, I have no money, I have no one to turn to, I have no one that I can lean on, and you say, but Lord, if I could just touch you, See, desperation touches the heart of God. Faith touches the heart of God. When you come into the house of God and your mind is set, they say, Lord, I'm coming to your house because you have something for me. And instead of me waiting on a feeling, instead of me waiting on a touch, instead of me waiting on a shout, I'm here to touch you. How do you touch him? You touch them even when you didn't get uh, nothing but two hours of sleep last night. But you said, I'm getting up anyway. You, oh my God, you, how do you touch them? You touch them when, when you know that you are exhausted and your body is tired. But you said, I'm going anyway. How do you touch them when you don't feel like praying? When you don't feel like reading your word, but you're disciplined and you say, I'm going to do it anyway. That's how you touch them. The, the woman with the issue of, of blood, she was under the Talmadge law. Because she was leaking blood, she was considered unclean. So she couldn't go around people who were clean, considered clean, because of a law that they had called the Talmadge Law. But she said, I'm going anyway. I'm going to break the law. Ho! Oh! See, this is the type of person say, and I'm going to follow Jesus. I don't care of the consequences. I don't care if friends leave me. I don't care if family don't want to be around me. I don't care if I have to walk alone. I don't care the con The woman, she did not think about her consequences. She did not care about her consequences. She did not care that if she get close to people, that they may outcast her or stone her because it was unto death where they could even stone you but she didn't care about the consequences 
she pressed her way through the crowd and touched this is how you touch God that's how you touch him and when you touch him there is a release of his virtue his virtue is his goodness 